Hi there, I'm Ang Lee, a PhD candidate at Princeton University. And today, I am very excited to present our work, PRGA, an open source FPGA research and prototyping framework. You can access PRGA with any of the links at the bottom of the slides. PRGA is short for Princeton Reconfigurable Gate Array. With PRGA, you can write a simple Python script to create and customize your own FPGA. To clarify, PRGA is not for creating designs that you run on pre-existing FPGAs. Instead, it is for designing the FPGAs themselves. As shown in the simplified workflow, PRGA will generate the RTL that can be simulated, synthesized, and possibly manufactured with commercial EDA tools. It will also generate all the CAD scripts for mapping applications to bitstreams for your custom FPGA. PRGA is fully open source. It is written in Python, easy to use, modularized, and highly extensible. The FPGA architecture supported by PRGA is also highly customizable and scalable. In addition, it is very easy to bring your own RTL or hard micro blocks into PRGA, such as block RAM, ESP, hard processors, memory controllers, you name it. PRGA generates human readable, ASIC compatible RTL. It also provides a fully open source CAD flow for using your custom FPGAs, specifically uses for synthesis and VTR for placing out. Before we dive into the framework itself, I want to answer one very important question first. Why do we need PRGA? Especially that we already have great high-level modeling frameworks like VTR. Well, first of all, PRGA is useful for FPGA architecture research. It enables gate level or lower level implementation of an FPGA architecture. Such low level implementation provides more accurate timing, area, and power analysis than a high level model. It also reviews many physical only challenges, such as floor planning, signal integrity, and so on. PRGA facilitates the research on the integration and optimization of hard components, such as hard processors, hard network on chips, etc. In addition, the configuration circuitry that controls all the switches and LUTs is often neglected by high-level models. With PRGA, we can study the configuration circuitry in detail. For example, we can study partial or dynamic reconfiguration, secure bitstream, and so on. Second of all, embedded IPGs are becoming more and more popular in SOC designs. PRGA enables the creation of embedded IPGs and the research on them. Note that PRGA is an academic research framework and not intended to be a substitute of commercial products. PRGA also facilitates the research on CPU FPGA hybrid SOCs, like the Xilinx Verso series or the microchip Polifier family. Last but not least, PRGA can be used in early stage design space exploration for FPGA designs. PRGA is open source, so it can also be used for academic or low budget chip designs. FPGAs built with PRGA are also realistic targets for CAD tool research. In the rest of this talk, I'll first go over the typical workflow of PRGA. Then I will show the architecture and customizability of PRGA. After that, I will go over an example PRGA script for an FPGA with 14,000 multimodal LUT sixes and block RAMs. This example FPGA is laid out with a commercial standard cell library, and I will go over key results in the evaluation section. At the end, I will briefly discuss a few strongly related works. 
Let's first take a look at the PRG workflow. This is the simplified workflow that is shown before. A more detailed workflow would actually be like this. Don't be scared, because I will explain this figure step by step. The first step in the workflow is the user written Python script. In the Python script, you can add custom cells or IP blocks and customize the IPG architecture. The architecture is highly customizable and we will elaborate on that in the next section. After specifying the FPG architecture, PRGA does all the heavy lifting job with passes, which are part of the PRGA API. These passes will automatically insert configuration circuitry into the architecture, then generate synthesis and place and route scripts. Most important of all, these passes generate human-readable, ASIC-compatible RTL for the IPGA. PRGA generates RTL based on parameterized templates. Therefore, you may affect RTL generation by changing only the templates, independent to the Python codebase. The generated RTL can then be synthesized and laid out with commercial EDA tools and standard cell libraries. After the ASIC implementation, PRGA can regenerate the place and route scripts with accurate timing and power characteristics. An IPG without a proper cat flow is useless. Fortunately, there are powerful open source cat tools available, for example, uses for synthesis and VPR for place and route. As mentioned before, PRGA generates all the scripts specific to your custom FPGA. In addition, PRGA provides a rich set of additional tools to automate the CAT flow. PRGA supports incremental verification. Post synthesis simulation verifies the correctness of the design implemented with LUTs. Post implementation simulation simulates the entire FPGA including the process of loading the bitstream and emulating the application. The takeaways of this section is that PRGA provides an intuitive, modularized, extensible Python API. It generates human-readable, ASIC-compatible RTL based on individually customizable templates. It provides a fully open-source CAD flow, and it supports incremental verification. Next, let's talk about the architecture and customizability of PRGA. This figure shows the architecture of a modern FPGA. PRGA supports heterogeneous blocks, so you can have different types of logic blocks with different sizes. The toy FPGA in this figure has two CLBs containing lots and flip-flops, plus one block RAM which is two tiles big. PRGA also allows you to customize the routing resources. You can customize the length, count, and combination of routing tracks. Global wires like clock or reset are also supported, so are directed, direct carry chains that bypass the routing tracks. Let's dive into a logic block. PRGA supports a variety of logic primitives, including the basic LUTs, flip-flops, adders, etc., as well as multimodal primitives or even large complex hardwired components. You are also well supported and welcome to bring your own hardware design into PRGA or implement your own multimodal primitives. The local connections in the CLB are fully customizable on a per-pin, per-wire basis. The connection and switch boxes are also highly customizable. PRGA provides a rich set of built-in routing patterns for the common use cases. Moreover, each routing box can be individually customized on a per-wire, per-box basis, giving you the full control over the architecture. Besides the customizable blocks and so on, one of the most important features of PRGA is its highly flexible ASIC-friendly module hierarchy. 
There are a few challenges when doing the layout for an IPGA. There are many different types of blocks and even more types of routing boxes. For example, the toy IPGA in this figure has 9 different switch boxes and 10 different connection boxes. This not only requires a lot of backend effort, but also makes floor planning a big challenge. Ideally, We'd like to maximize the regularity of the architecture as well as the reusability of the physical blocks we build. For large designs, we also want to achieve good scalability, and the best way is to build the array hierarchically. Addressing this challenge, PRG supports divisible routing boxes. As shown in this figure, each switch box can be divided up to four parts, and each connection box can be divided up to two parts. With the divisible routing boxes, we can create regular, reusable, hierarchical arrays. This gives the IPGA designers more freedom to choose their ASIC implementation strategy. Another key feature of PRGA is the support for custom configuration circuitry types. PRGA comes with two types of fully functional configuration circuitry types, GAN chain and packet chain. GAN chain is simply a long chain of flip-flops. The figure on the right shows a LOT3 with two modes and how the scan chain looks like inside of it. Packet chain breaks the scan chain into segments and adds high bandwidth packet switch routers between the segments. Bitstream generators for both types are included in PRGA. In addition, PRGA provides low-level support so you can easily implement your own custom configuring circuitry type. The takeaways of this section are PRGA supports fully customizable heterogeneous blocks and a large variety of logic primitives. PRGA supports divisible routing blocks and features a customizable, ASIC-friendly module hierarchy. PRGA also supports custom configuration circuitry types. All right, that's a lot of overviews. Let's now take a look at an example that builds an FPGA with 14,000 lot sixes. The figure on the left shows the logical layout of the FPGA. The FPGA consists of 16 subarrays, each subarray contains 89 CLBs and 5 block RAMs. The table on the right shows all the metaparameters of the FPGA. This FPGA has 288 routing tracks per channel, 10 multimodal lot sixes per CLB, totaling 14,000 lots and 640 kilobits of RAM. We use the packet chain configuration circuitry in this FPGA. Each subarray is configured through a single bit scan chain, and all the subarrays are connected into an 8 bit packet switch network to achieve faster bitstream loading. Here's the script that builds this example IPGA. Now let's take a look at some of the highlights in this script. At the beginning of the script, we select the configuration circuitry type and initialize PRGA. We create the routing resources, including a global clock and two types of routing tracks. Then we create a multimodal memory primitive. All the necessary multiplexing logic and mode selection logic are included in this one line statement. Next, we create the CLB. And we have the full control over the inputs and outputs of the block. Now we instantiate 10 multimodal lot sixes in the CLB. The great thing about using a high level programming language like Python is that you have access to all the native programming syntax like loops, arrays, dictionaries, etc. We then create all the configurable connections in th inside the CLB. The highlighted line creates the carry chain, which will be automatically applied when we create the subarrays and the top-level design. 
Then we can leverage the built-in functions of PRGA to quickly create, populate, and auto-connect connection boxes for CLB. We can then create and customize other blocks in a similar way. Following that, we create the 10 by 10 subarray and instantiate the CLB and block RAMs in it. As you can see, the syntax is simple and intuitive. Similar to how we create the connection boxes, we apply PRGA's built-in functions to automatically create, populate, and auto-connect switch boxes. At the end, we create the top-level array, instantiate the subarrays, then automatically fill it with switch boxes. Now we are done customizing our IPGA. PRGA does all the heavy lifting job with passes, which are Python objects. These passes will automatically create switches to implement the configurable connections, insert configuration circuitry, generate all the CAT scripts, and human-readable ASIC-compatible RTL. As a, Python, as a PRGA user, you are also well-supported and welcome to add your own passes. Now let's see what the IPGA looks like on silicon. The figure on the right is the layout photo of the IPGA implemented with a commercial standard cell library. This design reached taping quality, that is, it passed all the design rule checking and met the assigned timing constraints. We compare our results with two standard cell based IPGAs and one commercial IPGA. The figure on the left is an IPGA built with an open source 45 nanometer standard cell library. The figure in the middle is an FPGA built with a commercial 40 nanometer standard cell library augmented with some custom cells. The figure on the right is the well known Intel Stratix 4, for which we do not have access to the layout photo. The evaluation numbers of the Intel FPGA in the following slides are reported by the FPT 18 paper. First of all, Let's take a look at the area. Our results are scaled to 45 nanometer to match the device technology of our baselines. The takeaway of the table here is that PRG is comparable to previous FPGAs built with only standard cells, but about three times the area of a commercial FPGA. In terms of performance, PRG achieves slightly worse performance inside the CLB than the previous standard cell based IPGA. In general, the performance is two times worse than the commercial IPGA. As for routing resources, PRG achieves lower delay for the routing tracks than the previous standard cell based IPGA, but still three to four times worse than a commercial IPGA. The takeaways of this section are PRG is comparable with previous standard cell based FPGAs, but standard cell based FPGAs are in general three times the area of commercial FPGAs and two to four times the delay of commercial FPGAs. Last but not least, I want to mention a few strongly related works. Archipelago was the first open source synthesizable FPGA generator with CAT support first published in 2014. However, it was not updated ever since 2015. Professor Jason Anderson's group at the University of Toronto also studied FPGAs that are synthesizable with standard cells. This is the baseline we selected in our evaluation section. However, their works are not open sourced. OpenFPGA is another open source actively maintained framework for prototyping customizable FPGAs. It is tightly integrated with the VTR codebase. It shares many common features with PRGA and emphasizes on gate level customization, for example, MUX and buffer tree construction. The biggest limitations of OpenFPGA are the framework extensibility and RTL flexibility. But we sincerely encourage interested researchers to check out both frameworks, then choose the one that best suits their need. That concludes my talk, and thanks for your attention.